Hello everyone, how's everyone doing? Um, welcome to my channel. Um, I can't even remember the last time I made a YouTube video, I just never had the time. Um, but before I start this video, um, I just want to introduce myself again. I'm Taha Youssef, um, working as a network arch architect. Um, I love everything about automation. I don't really need to, I won't go into that that in a, in a moment um but before i move on um, um i really want to talk about um aci um, and sort of five ways to automate aci which is what this video is about um now cisco's aci um before we even talk about automation um what is cisco's aci that is a good question um so cisco's aci is essentially um essentially a software defined solution for data centers um now what does that mean i don't know i mean i i, I, I forget it it doesn't mean anything right and when i first heard of that term you know cisco's aci cisco's um, aci stands for application centric infrastructure you know a software defined solution uh, for data center i didn't know what that meant right I, I didn't understand it at all um and 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 this is what i want to talk about and i think one of the sort of great important aspects that you can sort of um um learn um when you're trying to understand aci is to try and understand sort of the backbone infrastructure sort of what's what what is what is it actually um, um controlling what it what is it actually pushing policies to um the physical in infrastructure as well as the logical infrastructure um you know the overlay the underlay you know understanding the, all of the, i think understanding that greatly improve, improves your sort of understanding and it gives you a much more sort of a dynamic overview of exactly what cisco's aci is um but whenever i hear that term um software is you know software defined networking for data uh, data centers it, you know it just went over my head so one of the things that personally made me help me understand ACI much better um, and gave me a sort of a much better in insight is understanding the the backbone infrastructure which I'm going to talk about that in, in, in a moment in my video um, yeah again you know this video is about auto, um, five ways we can automate um, ACI um, but I think before we move on to that I think it's best that I talk about what is ACI what is the software defined solution um, um, data center All right so Cisco ACI um, um, physical the physical um, infrastructure that it runs on is a spine and leaf topology um, as you can see here we've got a, uh, a spine and leaf topology we've got two spines and we've got five um, leaves um, so this is what ACI thrives on is this specific topology um, the devices that are used on the ACI fabrics are Cisco 9Ks now it can be 9300 or it can be the 9700 um, but from my understanding 9700 are used for spines and 9300 used for leaves now the ACI APEC controller which is right at your bottom of your screen you can see here usually you have two of these these are the brains behind ACI um, these are essentially the APEC servers these are physical devices and this is what you will need in order to run ACI mode now typically these Nexus switches will have a Nexus operating system an XOS um, but in ACI mode we will need to boot into the APEC OS um, so not the Nexus OS, um, OS so it's going to be the APEC that's going to be used for the ACI infrastructure um, again just going through a bit so this is the physical topology it's a spine and leaf topology um, um, and then it's um, with the hardware that we're going to be running is a Cisco Nexus um, 9300 or 9700 or and uh, we're going to need the APEC controller which is the physical device um, th which is really the control plane of the um, ACI um, fabric um, and obviously we're going to have to convert the Nexus OS um, and move and migrate over to an APEC uh, um, OS right. now the underlay infrastructure is something that I want to talk about here now the underlay infrastructure 
is a layer three. So the under, so essentially what we're doing is we're doing a point to point um, links, um, similar to what I had in my sort of first ever videos. Um, so we're gonna have a point to point link, layer three links across the spines and the leaves. Now, each spine will connect to all the leaves okay and each leaf will connect to all the spines right the spines never connect to each other and the leaves never connect to each other directly um, the IP addressing again you know it's point-to-point -point IP addressing um, so uh, slash 30 or you could use a slash 32 um, doesn't really matter here but the key element you can use um, you know personally what I like to do is when I'm doing my IP um, my ACI is, is um, do an IP unnumbered which is great um, set a loop back and just Use an IP unnumbered on loop back, and use that as the point-to-point -point links. Um, again, you're going to have to run a routing pro protocol to make sure that all the devices are reachable, um, and that routing protocol, depending on sort of the type of, um, we'll talk about that um, in the next video. Um, exactly what you're going to be using, whether you're using a data plane or a um, uh, CI again you know instead of sort of a software defined networking I like to think of ACI as a front end to VXLAN because that's exactly essentially what it is it's a front end you know to, to VXLAN um, um, so what that essentially what, I, what that essentially means is is that um, so let me talk about VXLAN so VXLAN essentially is a um, uh, a, 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 a virtual extensible um, um, local area network and one of the primary sort of um, um you know one, one of the primary sort of use case for it is that to extend um you know it sort of sort of leaves the limitations of, of regular vlans which are 12 bit um vxlan is 24 bit so you can have up to 16 million um, 700 16 million just over 16 million um, 700 um, um, uh, VXLAN or VNI these um, and uh, it's um, it's 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 really a much more imp uh, a bigger improvement to 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 v to, to VLAN's limitations um, but that is not the primary use case I would say of of um, VXLAN um, the primary use case of VXLAN is essentially to encapsulate layer 2 um, frames or layer two VLANs uh, into a um, a layer three um, fabric. So it's essentially a um, um, MAC in an IP um, um, uh, concept uh, protocol. Um, what that essentially means is that we can have a layer two um, um, frame, um, tra you know, traverse or migrate across a layer three fabric. Um, so that is essentially one of the uh, the primary use cases of VXLAN is an overlay concept that allows um, layer two migration over a layer three um, fabric. Um, um, VXLAN uses VTEPs. Now, what is VTEPs? Now, VTEPs are essentially um, the what I like to call them the the actual uh, think of it as as a termination point of your VNI. These the V the the the, the VNI. So the VNIs are the are the tunnel and the VTEPs are the term, the terminate, the terminator of the of, of the tunnel. If you feel, if you like to look at it that way, I mean that's personally where I like to look at it. Um, they terminate the tunnels, um, each end, and um, at each end of the VTEPs, you will have a you will have a VNI um, tunnel. Um, tunnel. Um, you can have, you know, like I mentioned, over sixteen million VNI um, between VTEPs, and uh, that is essentially. And now we move on to the VNI IDs. So the VNIDs are the actual tunnels that the VTEPs will attach onto, and um, essentially will have two VTEPs, and you will have a tunnel running between the VTEPs. Um, now, when you're configuring a uh, when you when you essentially using VXLAN solution in a data center without ACI, you can imagine you will you know have to essentially create each. VXLAN um, configuration across all the leaves of you know so all the leaves right at the bottom here um, and then you will have to create VTEPs you will have to create VNI IDs and you'll have to do that across all switches um, and it can be a tedious task um, and uh, a, a lot of error prone tasks really to say you know to say the least really um, so that is one of the issues with um, um, using 
VXLAN um, as a data center solution, this standalone VXLAN. Um, and, and this is where ACI comes in to the rescue. Um, so what essentially is happening here is that as you can see, um, we've got our ACI graphical user interface um, and this is the RAPEC controller and the physical infrastructure that you saw earlier, the underlay, the overlay, it can all be manipulated and controlled via the APEC controller. Um, so that is one of the great things that ACI does is that it allows you to use the VXLAN, which is essentially a data center solution um, um, to sca for scalability um, um, wise um, into a into a much more software defined networking so i hope you can understand what that means now the term software defines networking solution because you're essentially controlling the entire overlay the vxlan via a software defined method um, which is absolutely great to say the least um, so that is essentially what vxlan is um, um, and the the underlay i should say of aci infrastructure um, now i'm going to move on to ways that we can automate the ACI. Um, but before I do that, let's quickly get a brief look of exactly what those, um, what the ACI, let me just quickly, quickly show you around exactly what the APEC controller is. So once you log into the APEC, um, you will get this screen. Um, these are the tenants, um, but before we do that, let me just quickly show you what the fabric looks like. So remember we spoke about how um, 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 remember we spoke about how you've got the leaf spines, um, you've got the leaf switches and you've got the spine switches. Um, now that we know that is the physical infrastructure, let me show you exactly after once you install the um, or once you use the um, Nexus, um, swap the Nexus OS I should say to a um, ACI um, um, to, to an ACI um, operating system um, how you will actually discover that fabric um, and I'm gonna quickly quickly just show you now um, so what you'll essentially do is you'll quickly go into fabric okay um, and once you go into fabric you will see um, your topology um, so if we go into topology sorry sorry if, before we go into topology Sorry, I haven't set this up because I want it to demonstrate for you. Um, let's quickly go into Fabric Membership. Now, as you can see, um, we haven't got no registered fabric at the moment. So I want you to think everything that appears here is the actual leaf switches and the spine switches, the physical switches, the nexus switches that we spoke about. Um, so let's just see what's pending. So as you can see, we've got a leaf spine that's pending registration. So what that means is that it's not part of the pool yet. Um, we haven't enrolled it. So let's go ahead and register this leaf switch. Um, so let's say uh, to one, um, the node ID, and let's give it a name, leaf one. And the role is a leaf as well because it's a leaf switch. Now, how will Cisco know what is, uh, how will ACI know what is a leaf switch and what is a spine switch? That is down to the actual cabling itself, how the cable is, is, is constructed. Um, so how you essentially cable the spine switches um, across to the leaf switches. That is how Cisco um, ACI automatically recognizes the difference between spine and leaf. Um, so let's register this leaf. So as you can see, it's discovering, and essentially after a while, what will happen is um, that leaf will become a registered node. So it's still discovering. So as you can see here now, we've got no leaves, um, no virtual leaves as well. And I'll get to that in a moment. Um, but we've got no, no spines either. So it's still registering. Um, yep, yeah, so that's done. As you can see here, we've got a, um, a leaf um, switch. Um, it's a 9300 Nexus, um, Nexus switch. 
and that's been um, registered and is active and that is the pool ID that it's using IP that it's using um, so let's go ahead and see whether we've got any other pending because remember we need a a, um, a spine there we are we've got a spine switch as well that's been discovered now how it discovers it, um, it uses um, C um, Cisco's discovery protocol to discover items on the layer to uh, discover the, the, the node so let's go ahead and register this spine okay uh, let's give it um, 101 and then let's call it spine 1 Um, it's going to go through the same process again. It's going to start registering the node. As you can see, it's registering, so that's highlighted. That's not highlighted anymore. Great. Now we've got, as you can see, we've got one spine and we've got one leaf. Um, so now I'm using the um, Cisco's um, APIC um, simulator. So we can only have we can have more, but at the moment I've only got one spine and one leaf. So I want you to think of this as a physical switch next, which it is, okay, um, in a data center, and this is a physical leaf that's in your data center as well, right? And we're going to go ahead and start creating the fabric, right? So essentially when you go into tenants um, this is where you're going to be creating all your tenants in um, and what we get I'm going to quickly show you today is five ways we can automate this inf infrastructure um, one of my favorite five ways anyway um, so yeah so let's go ahead and move on now now that you have sort of understand have a, a little bit better understanding of what Cisco ACI is um, and, and what it does and, and the sort of you know weight the amount of weight it lifts off our shoulders by being able to sort of control the XLAN um, overlay fabric on a, uh, on, on a on a Nexus um, um, network infrastructure, spine and leaf network infrastructure. And uh, <clears throat> so whenever, let, 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 just to give you an example, um, say if, if I wanted to create now a, um, a new um, VTEP, right um and i wanted to create let's say a a, a, v, a vni id now what will I, I will have to do is i'll have to create that if i was to do it manually i'll have to create that across all the leaf switches but that is not the case with cisco's um apec controller once you create a, a a configuration all of those configurations are actually manipulated across the entire fabric um, so every policy that you create is is across um, the, the entire. Should have mentioned. So APIC stands for Application Policy Infrastructure Controller, um, and uh, this is a physical device, um, a hardware. Um, so uh, a, a, the APIC, the APIC, uh, the APIC server itself, um, and uh, the way VX um, VXLAN is mapped to a. Um, a Cisco's ACI is essentially uh, what I consider a direct mapping and this is why it really does help to understand VXLAN um, before you sort of dive into ACI because um, for example um, just to give you uh, you know we all know what VOR, VRF is virtual routing function um, and then we will have a bridge domain and what essentially a bridge domain is is a VNI ID in VXLAN right so think of bridge domain as a VNI, VNI ID um, in, um, in 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 v, in VXLAN um, think of EPGs um, as a um, uh, VLANs as regular VLANs right um, and uh, an application profile really is is a group of VLANs, right? Um, and and essentially you will attach your endpoint groups, um, um, which are the v, um, the VLANs, your service to your endpoint groups, which are essentially just coupled in VLANs. Okay. So now that you have a better understanding, let's let's move on to how five five ways you can automate the ACI. Uh, number one, uh, my favorite, one of my favorite ways is Ansible. Um, Ansible is a configuration management um, um, language. Um, it's not really a language; it's more of a configuration management um, um, uh, tool. Um, and uh, it's one of the great ways, really, to to um, to automate um, ACI. And I'm going to quickly show you how we can do it through Ansible. Um, 
going to create a tenant so there we are so we've created a tenant um, let me just quickly show you the content of the playbook actually um, um, so you can see the content here of the playbook um, let me clear my screen again because it's all gone funny um, Um, so yeah, so this is the content of the playbook. So what it essentially does is it logs into ACI with the username and password variables um, That's derived from the actual host file um, And then we essentially just go ahead and we create a tenant um, It's going to be called a test tenant um, Which we've just run and uh, It's going to leave a description saying that this tenant was created using Ansible. So um, let's go ahead now go. Let's go back to um, ACI and see whether this tenant was created. Okay. Um, so as you can see, um, I don't really need to refresh, but I'll refresh anyway. As you can see, we've just created that tenant using Ansible. The description's there. Um, there's also a small note here saying that it's created. Oh, we've just gone back. So I'm just gonna have to refresh. Um, there we are. So we've created that tenant. Um, using Ansible so you know you could manage ACI for a GUI but this is just five ways to automate um, um, ACI so one great way is Ansible my second choice is none other than REST API um, again using Python um, you can go ahead and automate ACI using REST um, using the REST um, API um, the REST I think in order to understand the REST API but much better is best to understand or to learn the ACI policy object. Um, so let's quickly go ahead and quickly sh show you um, how we can automate it with REST API. Uh, can't remember the actual REST API folder. So let's quickly, quickly show you exactly how we can automate it with REST API. Um, so it's, oh, what is going on today? Okay, so here's the REST API. Um, first, you will need to get the token. Um, you'll need to get the, um, to, in, in order to log into the ACI. Um, so this is just the REST token. So I'm just gonna quickly show you what the token code looks like. Um, um, so here's the REST token. So essentially just taking the URL, um, using the request module, um, and it's essentially just gaining that token here and as you can see um, the payload is essentially the token and what we're going to do is what we're essentially going to do let me just clear this out of the way we are going to use that token to run the rest co um, the, the the API uh, using the uh, the rest um, code. Telling you, I'm so tired today. Um, so this automation code is quick, is, is is fairly straightforward. So what it essentially does, it's just going to list the tenants. So it should list the tenants, including the um, the default tenants, such as the management tenant, um, the infrastructure tenant, and the common tenants um, of the ACI. Um, so let's quickly go ahead and do that now. Um, Oh, it's not worked because I forgot to change the actual username and password of the um, token file. So let's quickly go back to the token again. It, I, I don't know why, but ever the YouTube demonstration, it just or, or demonstration in general, nothing ever goes well. Um, so let's quickly go ahead and do this. So let's just quickly have a look. So the ACI login. So let's just quickly go sudo. 
get the vim editor up and you're probably why I'm using why I'm not using a um, um, integrated um, development um, editor such as environment such as um, uh, VS code but I just think this is easier just to demonstrate now okay so let's just quickly go ahead and change I'm gonna quickly just make some changes here uh, and so, so I'm just going to change the password of the this APEC controller. So it's admin123. Let's quickly save that and get out of there. Now let's go ahead and run that again um, and see whether it lists the tenants. There. You can see um, now we've just listed all the tenants. We've listed the um, the test tenant that we created earlier. Um, let's go ahead and let's let's actually see if we can create another tenant. Um, um, let's let let's do it manually this time. Um, so let's quickly go to add tenant. Um, tenant name um, Taha YouTube. demo okay and let's create a alias okay. okay and let's just not we're gonna leave an alias now um, we're not gonna create a VRF so let's just go ahead and create our tenant so we've just created another tenant um, so if we quickly go back to all tenants Um, there we are. We've got Taha um, YouTube demo. Um, so let's quickly list all the tenants again, and we should have that new tenant there. You can see. So that is how you can automate using REST API. Um, it's a great way, um, but there are easier ways to do it, um, which I'll get to in a moment. But um, REST API is great. Uh, make sure you use the document um, API documentation for REST, and it really helps to understand the the policy object model of ACI in order to automate using REST. Um, I think in order to automate using pretty much all the um, solutions that I'm given at, it's best to to understand the, the policy model. Um, so now let's move on to our third um, way which is Cisco's ACI automation Python um, ACI toolkit now the ACI toolkit is a great great module um, it's a I think it's an absolutely brilliant module um, it's it, it you know you can go ahead and quickly just search for Google on ACI toolkit um, the, the, there's a git repo there from Cisco um, but it's essentially running on top of rest API and it's a great way to sort of you know um, create tenants, create VRFs, create bridge domains, and essentially automate the entire infrastructure in a much more sort of easier way. Um, it's sort of running like an overlay on top of um, REST API. Um, it's a great way. Again, it gives you all the basic functionalities. So let's quickly go ahead and run um, the ACI toolkit. Um, so I'm just going to quickly go actually let me clear my screen first um, so the ACI toolkit again we've got similar sort of um, 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 what we did earlier on um, in terms of the ACI toolkit so first of all we're going to get the credentials um, and we're going to inject those credentials into the tenant uh, Python um, um, code so let's quickly have a look at the credentials on what's in there so let's quickly have a look at uh, credentials um, so as you can see, these are all the login details that are being injected. So this is essentially, I mean, you can inject it directly into the code itself, but I like to do it this way. Um, but let's quickly go ahead and change the um, the password. Obviously, that password has changed because I like to recreate the ACI infrastructure many times. So let's quickly um, um, then and then let's quickly credentials. So there we are. So let's quickly just change that. It's admin one two three. One two three. There we are. And save that and presto. Um, clear the screen again. Um, so it's 
Um, so let's go ahead and run the code. So let me quickly show you exactly what the Git code is doing. Um, it's doing similar sort of, um, um, I mean, it's, it's pretty much doing exactly the same thing as what the REST API was doing, uh, which is listing all the tenants, but it, it's just much more easier way using this um, this ACI toolkit module. I, I love it. I think the ACI library is great. Um, toolkit is great. Um, so let's quickly go ahead and run this. Um, so again, clear it is. Uh, so let's go ahead, Python. And let's go ahead and get tenants. There we are. As you can see, um, we've listed all the tenants um, in ACI. Um, just ignore that here. Uh, so yeah, so we can see we've listed all the all the tenants that we've created. Um, so let's go ahead and let's let's again create another sort of tenant manually, and see what happens. Um, so let's quickly go back, um, add a new tenant. Actually, let's 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 go ahead and create a tenant uh, using the ansible code the ansible code let's let's when we've seen how we do it manually but let's go ahead and do it um um through automation again um let me just quickly go back and then it's cd aci um so let's go ahead and create that code um so um, so yeah as you can see we've created a test in it let's quickly go ahead and change that so let me just clear the screen Oh God, what's going on today? Um, okay, and then let's quickly change the um, tenant name. So let's create it. Uh, let's call it again. This time we're going to call it uh, uh, Cisco ACI YouTube Demo. And let's save that. Um, let's clear the screen once more time, and let's go ahead and run the Ansible playbook. Okay. There we are. We've just created um, another tenant. Um, so let's go ahead and see whether we that's actually gone through okay. Um, okay, so there we are. Um, we've created that new tenant under um, Cisco's ACI demo tenant. Um, now let's go ahead and go back to our ACI toolkit and see whether it lists list everything from there. Um, on our ACI fabric, so the ACI. Okay. There we are Python free. Uh, let's just get the tenants. Uh, there we are. So as you can see, we've got all those tenants. So the original tenant we created, the one we created manually is here, and that last one that we created um, using the um, Ansible code is here. So that's um, one way and a great way really to automate using Cisco's ACI toolkit. Um, there are other notable mentions which I would like to mention, honorable mention I should call it. Um, so the other way is Terraform. Um, I won't go through that. You can just simply go through the um, um, Terraform um, HashiCorp website and it's really, really, I mean, it's, it's a really good handy way of doing it. I, I personally don't like it because you can't use too many if statements and so forth, but, but, but it's a great way of automating ACI. The third way, which I love, um, which I didn't get to show you, is the Cobra Toolkit. Um, again, this is another ACI sort of toolkit. Um, it's a, um, it, it's essentially using REST API underneath um, the library itself, um, but it's a great way to automate ACI. So, um, so there you have it. Um, you pretty much saw me 
um, talking about many diff five different ways you can automate ACI um, and uh, just a great just one tip really in order to sort of fully understand ACI I think one of the best thing you can do is um, learn VXLAN and see whether you can deploy a simple VXLAN in a lab um, something like a data plane um, learning method is great and um, it really does help you understand ACI a lot more better and it gives you that sort of dynamic overview of exactly what ACI is trying to do um, so that's it um, everyone um, I on my next video I have some great exciting news um, which I'm not going to mission now but I, on my next video um, there'll be some news that I think everyone would like um, um, well it gets me excited anyway um, but yeah I have a, have, a, have, a, have a great surprise so bye for now take care bye bye